السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I greet you the most perfect greetings from Allah. But for the benefits of our conversation, I would like to introduce certain words like source instead of Allah, revelation instead of Quran, mankind instead of maybe Muslim or Christian or this. Uh, let me start by saying that what is our purpose of creation? Why are we created? Is Allah not content with himself? With the source, he's not content with himself. Truly, he is content with himself. But what he wanted to know himself, he wanted to know what he's capable of. He wanted to know to manifest, to bring out the good qualities, the source, the attributes, the essence to mankind. So he taught it wise to create man, to represent him, to be his vigilant on the earth, this particular earth that we are in. For all that we know, according to the Big Bang theory, we know that the earth, the heavens, the universe, the cosmos, the galaxies, the Milky Way, were all one. So there is no differentiation between earth, sun, moon, here and there. No, there wasn't. That is before the Big Bang Theory, which those who are very good in physics and uh, atomic physics and other things, astrologers, they know all this theory. But when you look at the Revelation Quran, the Quran told us that there was a time nothing existed but he and he alone. There will come a time emanation will come out, manifestation will come out. There will come a time we shall go back to one. Now this idea and concept was what some of the philosophers propounded to say that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's the beginning of this idea and concept. But having said this, for every religion, for every religion that has no procedures, no methodology, no ethics to unite you to your souls, is a hollow religion. It's a porous religion. It's an empty religion. I repeat, for every religion, for every religion that you may think of, there are so many religions. According to Shiobazi, Shiobazi wrote a book, The Religions of the World. Now, the religions of the world, according to him, the major religions of the world were more than four or five thousand since the beginning of man. Not to talk of the sub-religions, cultures, practices, traditionalists, and so on. But I tell you, for every religion that has no method, 
to link you with your source, to realize who you are and what you are, to realize the purpose of your creation is an empty religion. Throw it away. Don't bother yourself in that. Because you will not know your essence. Man has, just as he is and created, has been given a sort of divinity in him. Has been given a sort of humanity in him. Has been given a source of animalistic in him. And then spiritualism in him. These are the four components of man at a certain level or certain sphere. All these four elements are in you. Divine element is in you. Homo element, that is uh, animalistic element is in you. Spirituality is in you. And then the humanity, being a man is also in you. These are the four basic things which we call the element of creation. We have the fire, air, earth, and water. These are the four elements of creation. They are all in you. We have all the metals you know in you. We have gold in you. We have silver in you. We have diamond in you. We have quartz, mercury, and all those elements that you know, especially those dealing, uh, those reading chemistry, but have known the periodic table. All the elements in the periodic table, previously they said, it was 99, but it's now about 103, three times, because some new elements like uranium and other things have been discovered. It is all in you, man. That makes you the most perfect being before Allah. So he said in the Quran, Simply put it, indeed and verily, we have made you, man, the most perfect being and given you the control, the power to rule the universe. Both in water, both on earth, everywhere man can go and becomes what he wants to be. But having said this, what are the instruments, what are the procedures, what are the methodology that man can use to achieve this goal? That is what we call Sufism. I don't want to bombard you much with your terms and other things. I'm trying to simplify the meaning of Sufism into our understanding. Other than that, there are so many technicalities or so many terms that the Sufis themselves use to describe themselves. But listen, a Sufi describes himself something else. A layman look at him as something else. Historians look at him as something else. Religious people other than Sufis look at him as something else. Let me give you an example of a policeman. To ask a layman, a policeman is somebody who arrests people and cause trouble and prevent you not to do what you want. Is that all right? Is that all right? We see him as somebody who only arrests people. That's all. If you park your car at the wrong place, he arrests you. If you do this, he arrests you. If you do it, that's all. But when we ask a policeman himself, who are you? He will tell you, I'm a peacemaker. He will not tell you, I'm there to arrest people. He will tell you, I'm a peacemaker. So you see, the way a policeman sees himself is quite different from the way we see him. So are the Sufis. So in short, who is a Sufi and what is Sufism? Sufism deals with human beings, or man for that matter. Man is also a complex being which has no behavioral formula. There is no formula for studying man, no. Like mathematics, quadratic equations, simultaneous equation, there is formula to solve this and that. In physics, mechanics and other things, Newton's law of motion, second law of motions, and so on. There are formulas. When you add Let's say hydrochloric acid to, uh, uh, to a metal or to a base, you get acid and other things, salt and other things. No, it's not like that. There's no formula to study man because our pattern, our mind, the way our mind works, the way our heart works, 
is quite different. So even the social scientists cannot provide us a behavioral formula for knowing man. With these issues, the religion will help you. Sufism will help you to know who you are, to know your fellow, to know your source, to know where you tap your powers from, to know why your existence is essential and necessary and to be beneficial to society. The Sufis believe that if you are not serviceable, if you are not beneficial to any other person or to any to group of people, you are not a good Sufi. So when you take the stories or the history of all other Sufis in the past, you see that they are altruistic, meaning they sacrifice their lives and themselves for the benefit of society. So that, let's categorize them in three forms to make my presentation very simple and easy to assimilate. We have the ascetic Sufis, we have the orthodox Sufis, and then we have the contemporary Sufis. This will help me simplify the meaning so that you grasp it. The orthodox Sufis, the uh, ascetic Sufis, the orthodox Sufis, and then the contemporary Sufis. Sufism started long ago, but it is an intellectual dishonesty for Wikipedia to give us a report that Sufism started 700 years after Muhammad Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is completely a fallacy. It's wrong. Sufism started with Adam himself. Adam believed to be the first man. That is the belief. That is the religious belief. Some may say there were people before Adam. Yes, no argument. Since archaeologists have made a lot of findings. But let's confine ourselves to the biblical presentation and then the Quranic presentation of man being Adam. What happened? Adam was placed in a peaceful environment. He was given all the powers. The angels, the other beings, what we know, what we don't know, were all succumbed to Adam's beck and call. Meaning, he controls them. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to know Adam to know his divine, his divinity, his powers, that he created him. So something happened. And Adam realized himself somewhere else, not in the garden, where things were happening just like that. So when Adam founded himself somewhere, he wanted to go back. What did he do? According to the Quran, he said, Rabbana zallamna anfusana wa illam takfir lana lanakunanna minal hasirin. Verily and indeed, we've made a mistake. We've committed a serious sacrilegious offense, which means that we have indeed go beyond the limit that you set for us. So we found ourselves in this situation and we don't want it. We want to go back to have our inner peace and then the correct link with you, the source, or Allah, or God, or Brahma, or yourself, and you call him many names. He is still the source. So Adam wanted this. Now the methods and practices Adam used is called Sufism. The methods and practices that Adam used to go back is called Sufism. So in short, Sufism is just a constellation of ethics and practices he believes so that it will open your heart to receive the divine illumination from the source. Let me see, let me see, recap, let me go back again. Sufism is the constellation of beliefs, constellation of beliefs, creeds, faith, practices, ethics, cultures, that will illuminate your heart because heart is the seat of the source. The heart is the seat of the source. The heart is the power station of you, your being, your thinking ability, your everything, whatever you do, it is the heart that will decide for you. Check that if the heart is having inner peace, the heart is illuminated, enlightened, you are a free man. You have a link with your source.
So that is all what Sufism it is about. But the Sufis have got practices, even the way they speak, the way they eat, the way they dress, the way they sleep, the way they walk. And then every Sufi realizes things naturally. We believe in the powers of trees, we believe in the powers of animals, we believe in the powers of days, stars, moon, and other things. We believe in them because they are part and parcel of the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what are the practices of Sufism or Sufis? What are they? When you go back to the ascetic Sufis, like Hassan Basari, Hassan Basari, Hassan Basari lived in Persia, now Iraq or Iran. Formerly, we don't have Iraq, we don't have Iran. They were all Persia. He lived in Persia. He wasn't an Arabian. He was a Persian. He studied this knowledge, this valuable knowledge from the cousin of the prophet Imam Ali. <coughs> the cousin of the prophet also studied from the prophet himself. He studied from the prophet himself. Aside the rituals of normal prayers and other things, he wanted a way he wasn't content with this. He went to the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and asked him, my cousin, isn't there any short way that will make me link myself to the divine? Isn't there a short way? All this fasting, prayer, what a word, to me, are mere rituals. They are mere rituals. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. I'm not feeling anything. I don't feel in the presence of the source in me. I don't feel it. I don't understand certain mysteries. I don't, I don't see it. I want to see it. I want to know the mysteries of life. I want to know the mysteries of Islam. I want to know the mysteries why the Quran is divine. Why the angels. Why, 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 why? Then the Rasul looked up to him and said, I will give you one strong weapon with which you realize and achieve your dream. And that is the remembrance of the source. The remembrance of Allah. Zikr. In Arabic, we say zikr. Zikr is a word in Arabic means remembrance. So I will give you the remembrance of Allah. That is La ilaha illallah. Please, can you say it with me? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Now, when you take this word, La ilaha illallah, it's 12 letters. You can see that it is a combination of three main letters. Alam, wal alif, wa ha. That's all. Alam, wal alif, and ha. La ilaha, you see, lam, and alif, and ha. Illa, Elif and Lam and Elif. Allah, Elif and Lam and Lam and Ha. Why the Ha ends? The Ha represents the omnipotency of the source. That is where the energy comes from. So when you go to Buddhism, you see that most of their mantras is based on who. When you go to other TM, Krishna, Sakodole, Sarabashi, Luminize and all other Eastern cultures, they all base their mantra or chanting on the word who. When you say who, it's like you are blowing a wind or an air. You know, air is an integral part of life that cannot be separated with life. The moment the air goes away, something else happens. Said that when Ali started repeating these things, he realized, within a short while, he realized himself, oh, I am that I am. He realized the powers of la ilaha illallah, that I am that I am. In that case, I'll keep it a secret. I will not disclose it unless to those who are committed, unless those who are in need, unless those who are in test of it. As one guru said, a Hindu guru said, 
when the disciple is ready, the guru appears. When the disciple is ready, the guru appears. If you are not ready, Allah will not appear himself, will not reveal himself to you, if you are not ready. But when you are ready to receive him, he reveals himself to you. So Ali begotted this thing to Hassan Basari. Hassan ba to his son, Hassan, and then Hassan to another Hassan Basari. These are the chain of the Sufis. I don't want to take up time much here because those who have the opportunity to listen to Radio Gold, I think I give the historical chain of them. But let me recap. From Hassan Basari, then to Dawood, Agai, then to Habib Ajani, then to Ma'aruf al -Kari, then to Sarr Sakti, then to Shakir Kubalahi, Abdul Salam al-Mashishi, Shak Abdul Qadiri, Sidi Ibrahim Madboli, Sidi Ibrahim Rufai, uh, Sidi Ahmad, all these people, Shak Abdul Qadir, then it came to Maulana Shaw Ahmad Tijani, then it came to Shaw Ibrahim Manyas of Senegal, and then finally to Shaw Alaj Abdullah Ahmad Maikanu. <laughs> These are the chain of Sufis, the masters, the grandmasters of Sufis. From then, we pick the source. Everybody, they, they just illuminated the world with the word of Allah. La ilaha illallah. Now, the orthodox Sufis. With the ascetic Sufis, they are very extreme. What do I mean by extreme? They don't even mingle. They don't even go out. They believe to live in caves. They live to be uh, in vast, vast areas where you cannot even see them. Uh, let me give uh, some facts on his Cyril Sakti. Cyril Sakti left his child the day he was born. He never saw him for 24 years. He never saw him. Cyril Sakti never uttered a word to anybody for 24 good years. He was in spiritual ecstasy to the extent that he doesn't know who is before him or he is after him, what to tell you, he believes. If he's going to talk to you, you don't even understand him. So he kept quiet for 24 good years without saying a word to anybody. With the orthodox Sufis, things came down a little bit because uh, physically we have uh, developments, we have the Renaissance, historical achievement, intellectual achievement with men. Man is now fighting to fit into his environment to uplift his standard of life or living. So what happened? They have to reshape the practices, the hardened ethics of Sufism to minimize it, to make it much, much more simple for everybody to embrace it. Having said this, coming down again with a contemporary like us, we all can be Sufis. Even though there is a mode of dressing of Sufis, but now we do not go. Supposing we all be in white clothes going about, we cannot work at our offices. Can we, can we do that? I don't think you can work with our white clothes, put you on long, you know, dread and other things to our offices. We shall look something different. So contemporarily, you can choose to be where you are, but you are Sufi. The most important thing is that just try to have the link with a grandmaster who will open the doors for you and then you enter. Now, what are the practices of it? One, zikr Allah. Remembrance of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so many names. Has so many names. Constitutionally, it's about 4,000 names. Allah has about 4,000 names. But restricted religiously, they say 99 names. Allahu al Rahmanu al Rahimu al Maliku al Kudusu al Salam al Mumin al Muami. Two al Sabur is 99. Why 99? Because all these 99 names are in you and me. And they are lying there dormant. They are lying in you dormant, idle. You do not activate them, so you will not see them. This has nothing to do with Islam, whether you are Muslim or a non-Muslim, whether you are Buddhist, whether you are Krishna, whether you are traditionalist, whether you are what or what. So long as you are a man, a living being, you have the 99 names of Allah and they are there torment in you and you can activate them at any point in time. Now the activation, 
How do you activate them? It's through a grand master, a grand Sufi. Master of Sufi, who knows it? He will just give you a study, analyze you, see your attitude, the way you work, the way you even talk. And then you will just pick out some of the names from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 99 names. You will just pick maybe Allah. Uh, let me give a typical example. We all know our vices, our defects, and we all know our abilities. Right? Everybody here knows his ability. Everybody here knows what he can do and what he can't do. Supposing someone realizes his mistake is to tell lies. Maybe he's a very good liar. He can lie. But he sees that lying makes him something else. Religiously, it's not good. Morally, it's not good. Intellectually, it's not good. Even supposing a lady knows that you are a liar, I don't think she will agree with you. Will she agree? Will she agree with you? Lady, will you agree with him? Exactly. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody will like a liar. But when you realize you are a liar and you want to quit, you want to quit, what do you do? Just see a grandmaster in Sufism. Just talk to him. By talking to him 5, 10, 15 minutes, with his ability, he will be able to deduce the correct name from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After Ta'ala's name, 99, he will just pick Allahu, al batin al Qudus, and mix it up for you to make it a complex word and give you a number of times that you are going to read it morning, evening, morning, evening, morning. By the close of the week, you stop. And it has been attested, it has been proved. It's not something where, no, 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 it has been proved a lot and a lot and a lot. Supposing one is a sickler, he cannot do any hard work. And you know, <laughs> the economical situation of the country, you need a lot of hard work. You have to strain yourself to do, go here, pass it. And you are not strong. You want to be strong. Just see a grandmaster of a Sufi, you just pick the names Allahu, al Kawiyu, al Matin. And then you add them up to you. And then give it to you. Please do this in the morning, do that in the evening for about a week, 14 days or 28 days. You are okay. You will gain restraint. Now, the Sufis also deal with medicinal aspect. There is a medicinal aspect in Sufism, like the plant that you see. Now, this is a tree. I don't know how they call it, but we call him Hanubian, meaning five fingers. It's again, ring. Good. Thank you for the correction or for the illumination. But we call it Hanubier. When you look at the leaves, it represents like the fingers. Don't you see it that way? See the leaf. Please, can you pluck just one for me, if it is possible? Is it possible? Is it okay? Good. Just one. If it is fully grown, you will see it like a hand, like fingers, like this. That's why we call it Hanubier. But they are of kinds. Hanubier is of about three kinds, right? The one that grows behind our uh, uh, backyard and other things. Now, this plant or leaf that you are seeing has a lot to do with Sufis. Yes. This just plant that you are seeing, we believe it has a strong name of Allah in him, Al-Mu'uti, Al-Mu'uti, the giver, the giver, Al-Mu'uti, the giver. So said that this plant, some of us, the youth, fighting, struggling to grasp things that they don't grasp. Just pick five of them and then write the name Al-Mu'uti, 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 66 times. On it. So on the five of them, you have 66. 66 times five will give you about 300 and something, right? Equaling the number of days a year. And then you smash it. Just there is a holy water we call Zamzam. Most of us they know Zamzam. If you do not get the Zamzam, the rain water. The rain water is okay. It's equally pure. Just soak it inside and use it to bath, to sleep. Continue doing that you see the powers of Allah in this plant. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open those. These are the simple, simple things that we Sufi are much, much more recognized. But having said all this, Sufis also recognize Africa before because we believe Africa is the seat of Sufis. That I must say it. I must bring your, mag, your minds back to our home. All the great Sufis, just few of them do not visit Africa. Few of them. That is why Africa is endowed with a lot of knowledge. Because they imparted a lot of knowledge. Askia the Great of the Malian Empire. Askia the Great, Muhammad Askia. He was able to go to pilgrimage to Mecca and pass through Iran, Iraq, Middle East, Egypt, and brought in 300 Sufis into Mali. 300 Sufis. In fact, they built the Fura Bay University, which is the second largest university in the whole world after the University of Azar in Egypt. The Fura Bay University, Timbuktu, they built it. They built very great, great. Uh, 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 schools, institutions, not only to teach the Islam or the rituals of Islamic religion and others, but pure knowledge of science, pure knowledge, natural knowledge. And I tell you something, no single invention that has been done without a Sufi's idea in it. Look at an aeroplane. Look at an aeroplane. It gives you the name of Allah, Sultan. Sultan. The scene and then the ta. The ta represent the wings. The elif represent the other side. And then the noon represent the city, the engineering aspect of it. I wish we have a board. Thank you. I wish you have a board. Now let me go a little bit further because I want to give you time to ask a lot of questions. Right? Maybe there are certain aspects I did not touch. So when you ask me, I'll be good. Sufism is a vast knowledge. But the most important thing is that Sufi must be at peace with himself first. A lot of people go about they are in conflict with themselves, but they don't know. The mind is not stable. The heart is not stable. The heart is telling him something different. The mind is telling him something different. And so he acts haphazardly. He just acts anything. Many of us spend a lot of hours without knowing what we are doing. Many of us spend a lot of hours. When you take the whole 12 hours of the day, Ask us, what are the benefits we drive from these hours? Aside sitting at the office, maybe sitting at our workplace, that's all, nothing. Some of us even no office, no workplace, nothing. We do a lot of things without thinking, without, without trying to realize the consequence of it. Uh, some of us go to the markets without planning to buy anything, they come home with things. Am I right? You just go into a supermarket, seeing things. He did not plan that I'm going to supermarket today to buy this and this and this. But because he enters the supermarket, he sees it, he starts buying them. No, we don't do things. Sufi will not do that. Every single day, a Sufi must plan his daily work. Today, I want to be even visit. To visit friends is part of Sufi uh, processes. There are formula for that. There are practices for that. I have time today. I'm going to spend it to visit almost all my good friends. Then you will do that. The whole day is for visiting. Today I'm going to visit my grand sheikh and ask him questions. Already the questions are on paper. You go there and ask questions just to get more enlightened. We just don't do things like that. No, because time is the most essential commodity. When lost, cannot be redeemed. Time is the most essential commodity. When lost, cannot be gained. You cannot gain it again. So, my brothers and sisters,
I think, uh, no, I just have some few to wrap up. Let me wrap up and give you much more time to ask a lot of questions. Uh, a Sufi is somebody who loved everything, who cherished everything, who respects, who is humble, who is devoted, who is committed, and most especially honest and truthful. These are the good qualities you will get and gain after practicing Sufism. You have to be faithful, honest, humble, respectful, loyalty, and then recognize and accept the belief of others. If you are not a Sufi, or this man is not a Sufi, don't reject him because he's not a Sufi. No, 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 we don't do that. So tolerance is a key word in Sufism, tolerance. You have to tolerate everybody you have to direct everybody, you have to teach everybody for them to benefit from you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Hello? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Sheikh once again. Thank you so much for that. Uh, how, if we were to place value on this, how much would you be paying for it? How much would we be paying for this? <laughs> All right. So now it's time for questions. It's time for questions. Um... Okay, so we'll start. Who wants to ask the question? No, no. Okay, all right. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Sheikh, my question is a question that I keep asking all the time about the relationship. What is the relationship between Osajifu Dr. Kwame Kuma? and Sheikh Ibrahim Inyas, and also the contribution of the Sufis in Dr. Kwame Nkrumah attaining his presidency, and the contribution of Sufis in the spiritual direction of Ghana. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. I thank you very much. Like I said, I want to be brief and short. Other than that, we can keep on talking, 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 talking. And let's reserve for you to ask me certain questions so that I touch areas which I do not touch. Maulana um, Sheikh Ibrahim Physically and geographically, is supposed to be a Senegalese. Thank you. It's supposed to be a Senegalese from Senegal. But you know, in Senegal, they have their indigenous people. We have the Wolf, the Lebipsi, the Surukole, the Nyoro, the Nyere, the Sises, and the Madingus. These are the complete, indi strong, indigenous people of Senegal. But Sheikh Ibrahim Nyas, his parents migrated from Morocco. Moroc, which we say Morocco, Morocco. You know, it's not Morocco, it's Moroc. It's a Turkish word that they say Marrakesh. And then the French colonizers pronounce it Moroc. And then we also say Morocco. Migrated from Marrakesh, they were Arabs. Shaw Ibrahim was born 1900, that is 10th October 1900, and died 23 July 1975. He spent 75 years. His mystical aspect of life cannot be overemphasized and cannot be undermined. It is, it is something that you cannot, you, you cannot just throw it away. Because the Arabs respected him a lot. The supposed University of Azhar granted him an award and called him Sheikh al-Islam. 
Haji Ibrahim Mais. He's a mystical figure, honestly. All the levels in Sufism, we have 92 levels in Sufism. 92 levels, yani 92 standards, classifications. From Murid, Murid Sadiq, from uh, Suluk, yani Sadiq, Majzub, and other things. Al Fana, Al Baka, Fana Ul Fanai, Jam Ul Jam'i, Sir Ul Sirri, Hafi, Akhfa, and so on. These are all the Marathi stages in Sufism. Show Brahman yes, has consumed all. He has consumed all. Such that his problem is Africa. Like I told you, every Sufi wants to be beneficial. That is one objective of a Sufi. You have to be beneficial anytime. They are altruistic. You kill yourself to, to let somebody believe it. You work hard for people to enjoy. You work hard for people to benefit. That shows the essence of real Sufism you know and practice. But if you want everything for you alone, you alone and say, I'm a Sufi, mm -mm -mm. then I will say you are a pseudo Sufi. A pseudo Sufi, not the true Sufis. Because every single Sufi is altruistic. So, Shah Ibrahim wanted to also put this to mankind. He was fighting for Africa, but he wasn't a politician. He wrote a book, Africa for Africans. He wrote it in Arabic, they translated it into French, and now in English. Africa, meaning Africa for Africans. At his time, Gamal of the Nasser, the president of Egypt, became his first friend to a grand sheikh of the University of Azar called Sheikh Muhammad Shantut. That was the pro vice chancellor of the University of Azhar. So he invited Sheikh to the University of Azhar and they're realizing the wonders of this man. He told him, Our president, who happens to be a good friend to Dr. Sajifu, the man of the Nasser, will I will do this to him. She will accept it. So Gamal Abdel Nasser visited him. And then Shehu Radiallahu Ta'ala started bewashing them to believe in themselves. Africa, we are Africans. Allah has given us a lot of things. Geographically, we are good. We have everything that Allah. The climate is good. Agriculturally, we are good. Financially, we are good. Why can't we man ourselves? <coughs> We are depending on this white, 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 and they are cheating on us, cheating on us, enslaving us, enslaving us. They now even neocolonizing and whatnot. All that. Why can't we come together and liberate our people? So, Shah Ibrahim started this thing. And so, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah thought of pan Africanism. Shah Ibrahim was very, very instrumental into that aspect. Very, very instrumental. There wasn't any seminar that they held you would not attend. Couple with spiritual battles. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Now you know, whether you believe it or not, you are living on Earth. And Earth is part of the planets. The planets are part of the solar system. The solar system is part of the galaxy. The galaxy is part of the Milky Way. Meaning the universe, right? The universe. So whether you believe it or not, there is an influence going around. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. Plants will not grow when there is no sun and moon. As our fathers who go to the seashore to catch fishes, when the moon is bright, they get more fishes. But when the moon is waxing, going down, no fish. The ladies will tell you better the importance of moon in their life cycle. No moon, no. No moon. You ask the ladies, they will tell you the importance of the moon. So, Sheikh Ibrahim Manyas is well versed in astrology. Very, very, extremely versed in that. So he was able to de de design a table for them. At such a time, go and have a meeting. People, world will listen to you. At such a time, face these people and that. 
That was what Shiro Ibrahim Menyes did, even to Nkrumah. He was very instrumental to independent of Ghana. The Akosombo Dam. Ask history. They will tell you. They attempted building Akosombo Dam three times. Failed. The first one, they construct it and then something will happen. They reconstruct it, something will happen. The third time, Shaw Ibrahim came to Ghana in 1952 for the first time and he was told that this is the situation. He said, take me to the place. When they took him to the place, he saw the river, he did one or two things, spent three or four days there and left. He said, Nkrumah, build your Kosovo. It will be there up to today. It will be there up to It is still there up to today. Whether you believe it or not, there are other beings that you can see, which they call the genie. But sometimes we say evil spirits, this is no. Evil spirit is quite different from genie. Genies are also creations like we and me. Just that we can't see them, but they see us. They walk, they go about, they like our women, they like our men, their women like our men, and other things. They eat even our food and so on. They are jinn. They are also there. They are separate entities. They are of seven classes. Then we have the evil spirits. They, they are also different. They are not the same thing. So a Sufi can tell you all this. Now, coming back to how Nkrumah influenced the independent, uh, Shaw Ibrahim influenced the independent, it was that. If you could remember, Nkrumah was imprisoned. Do you know how he get out? Before forming the CPP. Do you know how he came out? It was through the press of Sheikh Ibrahim Nes. He told him, you were imprisoned, you will be released, you will form a party, and your party will be the winning party. Locked. You will be the first president, you will first a prime minister, then the first president. And through that, everything went successfully. Now, Shah Ibrahim was instrumental to uh, Jomo Kenyatta. He was the master Habib Bumangib of uh, Tunisia. He was the master of King Hassan of Morocco. Even Yasser Arafat, he struggled for the Palestinian revolution. Yes, Shah Ibrahim did that. Senegal itself. Uh, he was also instrumental. That was the, they had they, they attained their independence around 1960. Shah was influential, but then their president was there. He was very instrumental. Gambia, Sierra Leone, Abidjan, even Togo. Here, Togo. Shah Ibrahim was very because he visited almost 78 countries of the world. In Africa, there is no country that Shah would never step inside. South Africa, Mozambique. And so he, he met Stephen Biko, the one who was murdered. He met him. So, Nana, I don't want to eat, take much, much of your time. I think I've answered you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we, can we have another question? Um, I'm interested in asking about the genies and elemental spirits and your relationship to man and how man can interact with them to the benefit of society and the benefit of ourselves. Thank you. Um, very interesting question, but I'll make it very brief. Now, you see, like I told you in my earlier presentation, man is the most perfect being. Just as the creator loves him, every living thing also loves man. The genie, the angels, the lower spirits, the upper spirits, what you call the evil spirit, what you call the good spirit, they all love man. They all love man. Now, the relationship is that when you try to increase, to raise your super sensory, the super sensory in you, that is the eyes, the sight, the hearing, the breathing, and other five senses as you know. When you try to increase their ability to a super 
sensory. In that case, you conceptualize it. That is where you get the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in remembering them, all the good spirits attached to that name will come to you. You come to you. you they will come to you in the form of servants, not masters. But when you follow something else, like the occult and other things, you become their servant, they become your master. That is where a lot of bad things are happening, a lot of bad influences are happening. If you don't know how to master them, it will become injurious to your life. Just as electricity, if you are reckless with electricity, I tell you, you know where you'll be. Where you'll be, we shall like it. Right? But when you, when you know how to make good use of it, utilize it, then it becomes a good boy. It becomes a good servant and you use it. So in short, there are codes or words, let me put it this way, words that you will be taught. But first of all, we take your astrological position in the heavens or on the earth. Let me say, somebody born on Monday, July Monday, early July Monday, Let's say 1st July, Monday. We are born on 1st July, meaning you are a Cancerian. Zodiacal, Zodiacally, meaning according to Zodiacal signs, you are a Cancerian. And you belong to the water group. Right? You belong to the water group. Now, Monday, according to the days, is also water. So you have two water entities in you. So the best spirits that or the best genie that you can contact to make it easy for you is the genie that belongs to water because elementarily you are there but when you leave that aspect and you go fighting for genie in let's say fire element and you are water element there is collision you will not get you will not benefit from him rather you give you problems he will be a bad boy to you I hope I'm clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take two more questions and then um, we'll move to something else. Assalamu alaikum. Um, please, when we talk about Islam, really we think about the Arabs. You know, Islam came from the Arabs. Uh, in these days, I could see that the black man has found himself. He has traveled all over the world. There are a lot of people who are extreme Muslims. But the blacks and the Arabs can never go together. I've been thinking this for a while. This makes a lot of people to know that Arabs are for Islam. And secondly, as I came, I see you are both religion. You are a spiritual man. I'm thinking and I think we are looking for a moralist person who can lead this nation. We are looking for a spiritual person who have developed spiritually, physically, mentally, economically, who can lead our country to the highest extreme. What are you doing? <laughs> 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 oh, <God. laughs> Hello. Hello. I thank you very much for this question. It is believed. Islam is a religion for all. It's all for Arabs. It's all for the black. It's not for the whites or whatever. Islam is for all. It's a universal religion. The Quran is the last divine book revealed. You know, the source has revealed 104 books. 104 books. Quran happens to be the last. The divine revealed book. Which is supposed to be the everlasting constitution for mankind. Because everything has been explicitly stated inside A to Z. Coincidentally, coincidentally, since Muhammad Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a man, 
created a man, he must have where he belongs. So Allah's own wisdom put him in Mecca or within the Arabs. Since he has been fixed there, then naturally his book must follow suit, must follow with his language. Don't forget, Abraham was a Babylonian. Abraham was not an Arab, was a Babylonian. Jesus wasn't an Arabian. Jesus spoke Hebrew. Right? Was an Israeli. David, an Israeli. Suleiman or Solomon, an Israeli. Take Ezekiel, he was a Syrianic. Ezekiel, the ancient prophets. Was a Syrianic. Now it's a dead language, nowhere to be found. And all those. So, incidentally, the Quran was revealed in Arabic language. Now, let me tell you one thing. Even the Arabs studied the Quran just as we study it, despite it is their language. The Arabs, they also studied. The, that is why a lot of uh, differences come up, comes about. A lot of differences are in existence. Because if you study the Quran and you are not equipped with the discipline, that will let you understand the deeper meanings of the Quran. You take it shallowly and then you cause chaos and problems, which is not meant for that. That's why Sufis, we are not attached to so much religious sentimentally. No. All that we are interested in is to open the hearts of mankind to receive the illumination so that you stay peacefully with everybody and then the world will be at peace. Oh, that is our I, I hope I've answered you. So it is the Arabs, they try to race, you know, to put some kind of racism or, or racist activities or attitude into the Islam. I hope you're getting me. They try to do that. If you are not an Arab man, you speak Arabic language. Hey, where do you get this from? I remember when I went to Saudi and uh, one sheikh, an old man, he was uh, an Arabic, was, was kind of looking at me. <laughs> this black man, too, what is he doing here? This black man, what is he doing here? I just, I wanted to disprove him. So I asked him, hey, sheikh, big man, please come. I just want to ask you a question. The Grand Mosque is very big, where the Kaaba is situated. It's very, very, very big. Very, very big. It has over about 52 do uh, doors into the mosque. I asked him, were you born here? He said, yes. Did you grow here? He said, yes. He said, good. How old? He said, I was 16 to 17. I said, that's good. Are you a knowledgeable person? He said, yes. And I asked him, I know. I said, good. Wow. You know history? He said, he knows history. He said, that's good. Show me the door in which Muhammad passes Allah to Allah come Allah to Kaaba. Show me the door. I want to see the door. I want to see it. Power. I tell you, he became my friend. By the close of the day, he became my friend. He couldn't. I said, I just want to tell you that Islam doesn't belong to you. Quran doesn't belong to you. It is universal. Everybody can be a Muslim. Everybody can read the Quran. What that we are interested in is to raise above religion. Let your heart be clean. Let your heart be clean. Follow the Sufis, the Grand Masters. They will open the doors for you. You will be illuminated and then you receive the blessings of Allah. In that case, Inshallah. you don't see yourself white, black, red, blue, and other things. I think I've answered you. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Thank you very much for your well wishing. Thank you very much. But I think I'm content with this. To disseminate the ways of God. I think I'm content with that. Eh? So that people will benefit a lot from what Allah has given me. I'm content with that. Allah. Allah. Thank you. It looks like it's been all men, so we'll take one from the lady this time. Okay. Salaam alaikum, Ustaz. Wa alaikum, salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, you're just talking about men, men, Sufis. How about the women? Just give her a history about the first woman that became a Sufi. 
Allah Akbar. Fighting for equal rights. <laughs> I, I admire this and I love it. Seriously, the women Sufis did a well. We have one great woman called Rabiat al Adawiya. An Iraqian woman called Rabiat al Adawiya. She was a great Sufi. She was a lady. She served the husband to the extent that the husband knew that, yes, I have been served and served well. The husband maltreated her all throughout. But because she was a Sufi, she was able to accommodate him. Now, let me give one example of what she's been doing. Every time she cooked food, eh? every time she cooks, she will add a stone and a whip on the table that the husband will eat every single day. A big stone and a whip. So, for about 10 plus years, the husband said, Aha, uh -huh, Rabbi, I just want to ask you this question. Is it your culture? Is it your family culture? Anytime you prepare meal for me, you add a big stone around and then a whip around. What should I do with them? I, I just want to know, is it your culture? She said, oh, my daddy husband. That's not the case. You know, sometimes we women, we are childish. In our cooking preparation notes, we are childish. I put this to them. Any taste of the food you tasted it and it is not sweet, whip me with these lashes. Give me some severe lashes to remind me. If I try to run away, take the stone and throw it at me. The husband said, what? Is it a secret? She said, yes. Is it? Are you sure? Are you normal? She said, yes, I'm normal. No, I'm not getting you. He said, get me my husband. That is, that is my intention. I want to serve you wholeheartedly. I want to please you wholeheartedly. Anytime you see me, you should be pleased with me. But you know, women, sometimes we are childish. So when I play such, you treat me such. The man collapsed. He just collapsed. He went unconscious. He never heard it. He never saw it. When he came back, he regained his senses. He raised up his hand. He said, Oh God, you have destined that this lady must be my wife. And if this is the way she's been serving me without me realizing, without me, with, with, with me being stupid and foolish, not to see the kind of servitude this woman has been rendering to me, God, I've seen, forgive me, but grant her her wishes before. And then the man died. Since the man died, she became so absorbed in worshiping God to the extent she even walks in air. She walks on air. She can just remove, and she's wearing dread. Rabbit and Adawiya was wearing dreadlocks. As a, sign, as a sign of hard link communion with God. Yes. And then we have another lady, Rehana Majnuna. Rehana, meaning Rehana the crazy lady. Rehana the crazy lady. She was a Sufi. She's also wearing dreadlocks. She has never married. She has never married. She has no time for anybody. She has no time for anybody. Anybody. She's a student of Rabbi Yatul Adawiya. She has no time for anybody. And you know, Sufis are Allah's madmen. Do you know that? <laughs> Sufis are Allah's madmen. So that one great Sufi said, the happiness of a madman lies within himself only. <laughs> the happiness of a madman. If a madman is happy, do you know? No. If he's sad, do you know? No. It lies within himself only. <laughs> So the consciousness of a Sufi, the illuminate, the, the light, the enlightenment he received from Allah and is happy and content himself, you will not know unless you get close to him. Salaam alaikum. Brother Aswad. Yes, sir.
Rastafari. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Peace and love. Give thanks. Give thanks. Yes, I just want to say right now, I really feel pleased and honored to see this level of presentation here today. Because since I've been in Ghana, which is over 15 years, I haven't been able to feel the Islamic community actually reaching out to the general population from that broader spiritual perspective. I get the feeling like it's as a um, sectarian Islamic community in Ghana that doesn't reach out to the broader society. So today I am here and I really feel that it is on this level where general population can relate to the teachings from what I'm hearing here today. So, shake. So I say, give enough respect and enough honor to Rastafari. And, uh, Secondly, now, um, shake. What I would like to find out, you see, is that the government of Ghana is about to pass a law called the Plant Breeders Bill. This law is going to give the government, I mean, it's going to give plant breeders from foreign in particular to come and take over our seeds and patent it and own it. They have crossed breeding these plants with mixing up with animals, human beings and insects and every single thing. So what it's actually saying is that they do not recognize the spiritual contribution of the creator to the world and to human beings. From a Sufi standpoint, what is your position on that kind of um, level of, of um, interaction and, and, and production and all of that? I would love to hear that. Give thanks. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Sufi, I think in my earlier presentation, I told you that every Sufi cherishes natural issues. Everything that nat is natural, because we believe everything that is natural has a sort of divinity in him. The plants, the animals, the mangoes you are seeing, the pineapples, all the fruits, trying to crossbreed them is trying to change the elementary functions which is in divine which is in the form of divinity in them it's like you are tempering with the divine powers in them so sufis do not accept this crossbreeding here and there leave it at this, as it is naturally leave it as it is naturally the plants the trees the fruits are, uh, you know, we have what we call hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy. Now, when you ask, when you have those of us who are fond of taking bodily, body painkillers and other things, let me just give you a simple, uh, what I call it, medication for it. When you are too tired, right? Just get, this is small, the bigger one, the bigger one, not cold. Just buy it, try to drink all, drink all. It's not easy when you start it, especially if you are not used to it. Just drink all of it, the bigger one, drink all and go to bed. Except that you'll be waking up for a ring. But the more you urinate, the more you drink, it suits your system. Fatigue is nothing but the overworking of the muscles in your system. The overworking of the muscles in the system. When the muscles are overworked, they deposit a lactic substance, which is toxic or acidic. That is where you feel the pains. But when you take in a lot of water, you know, water in its form is an organic acid. It helps you, you know, bring them out. All the deposits in every muscle, it brings them out in the form of a ring. And then you get your rest. So my brother, we don't believe in interchanging seeds. No. Leave them naturally the way they are. Because Allah has put a lot of powers in them. I hope I've answered you. Thank you very much. Yeah. It looks like we're, we're, we're looking at two, but maybe we'll take just three very short ones so we can catch time. We beg you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. My question has to do with uh, the concept of oneness. And as Sufis, 
we are, our heart is trained to accept every living thing as one. But then you realize that after you've, go, you've gone through this training for some time, you still don't feel that aspect of, con of the concept in certain Sufis. They still can have a point to differentiate between creation. That is seeing this person to be a mad person, seeing this person to be an animal, instead of the actual concept, which is maybe seeing everything to be one. So I want more enlightenment on the concept. Alhamdulillah. You know, we have what we call veils. Veils. In the journey of a Sufi, definitely like a car traveling from Accra, let's say to Kumasi, obviously you may have portals, you may have caves, you may have some mountains to climb and then some slopes to go down. So is the Sufi journey to the, cre the creator. In your journey, that's why they call you a Sufi. That's why we have so many talk. Tarika, Tarika. Tarika means a way. Tarika Tijaniya, the way of Tijani. Tarika Tilkadiriya, the way of Abdul Qadam. That's all. It's a way. You are traveling. You are a traveler. Even in some of the oldest books, like the mystical ways of Islam, it's a book written by Shrich, a German Sufi. She, she calls it Path, Path, Path. She doesn't even say Tarika. She doesn't even say Sufism. She calls it the Path, the old Path. It's a path that you are walking. Now, as you are walking, obviously, you meet a lot of uh, uh, obstructions. You meet a lot of obstacles and other things. Those obstacles, we call them veils, hijab. In Arabic, they say hijabi. Hijabi, right? That is an Arabic word. Hijabi, meaning veil, partition. There are something that partition you. So we have various forms of partition. We have the partition of the eye. We have the partition of the mind. We have partition of the heart. And then we have partition of the intellect. Then we have physical partition. Then we have spiritual partition. Mm -hmm. The partition of the eye is to see things and differentiate them. But after your Askari Tarbiya, that is the training which has enlightened you to accept the concept of oneness, which was started and propounded by uh, uh, Sheikh Al Akbar Ibn Arabi Al Khatimi. He was the first Sufi to propound this concept. If he had problems, he had problems. That's around 9th century. He had problems with even his colleagues Sufis. What concept is this? Why should he say we are all one? He tried to educate people and later on they even hold it in high esteem better than even him. Now don't forget, even the Arabic wears a dreadlock like a dress. His dreadlocks, his, his locks were as long as to down, down. Sometimes he doesn't even put clothes. All the hairs are his clothes. Even the Arabic al khatimi he tells you that after the training in Sufism, you get to an usul. You have not reached the point that the veils must start going out. You be careful with your watching. What we look at. Don't look at sights or things that will distract your mind from your purpose. Is that clear? Don't look at things that will distract you. Because your goal is to clear the veils. And the verse of the eye are of just three kinds. So you can easily clear them. Allah as Samir al basiru can do that for you. So you got hold on to the Askar and then the total numbers are given to you. And then the stipulated time is given to you. By a week, 21 days, you are okay. Now look at the Askar, the number of days. They are in days. Because the moon goes just in 28. 28 days, that's all. As for the 29, the leap year is something else. I'm not talking about astronomy or astrology here. But it it's interrelates. Then the veils of the heart that you have to fight height. You have to stay night vigil to succumb the heart. To make it calm. And it is in the night vigil that your heart becomes settled. The night vigil is very important for a Sufi. Sufi don't sleep. We don't sleep. Sleeping, when you sleep, they sleep with you. When you sleep, material aspect of world will sleep with you. And you'll be retarded. Even if you are not doing anything, just sit down and be thinking about yourself, what you will achieve, what you want to be, how, the way forward, 
how you're going to increase and lay, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot. At least an hour or two hours, then you sleep. A Sufi doesn't sleep the whole night like that. We don't do that if only we want to go our way. So it is staying the night vigil that awakens your heart. And then you start pushing away the veils of the heart. Jealousy, wickedness, hatred, here and there. No, 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 no. They all go by themselves, by staying night vigil, even though it's not a short period. Then the intellectual veil. Intellectual veil is that because I can speak Arabic, you cannot speak Arabic, so you are not. No, 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 no. So all these veils are there. Gradually, with zikr and remembrance of Allah, you realize and accept this concept. Wassalamu alaikum. Allah. All right, because of time, it looks like we'll have to wrap up here. Thank you so, so much. We wanted to give two more questions, but it looks like the time will not permit us to do that. Um, at least one. Nana? Okay. All right. Namaskar, um, In your dissemination, um, you made mention of um, saying Sufism is a way connecting us to source. And I would like to know beyond Sufism, what is there? And beyond source, what is there too? You get it? And beyond the universal equation, what's there? <laughs> Beyond source, there is one, which is, which is you and I and He. You and I and He. Beyond you and I is He, and beyond He is nothing. Allah. That is infinity, endless, emptiness. And my next question is, when came you? Whence came you? I was. I was. And where do we go from here, metaphysically speaking? Metaphysically speaking, we are coming back to the source. Allah. 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 The creation uh, was being done. Is there anything like ghost and witchcraft among the creation? Ghosts. Ghosts. The concept of ghosts is quite different from the concept of witchcraft. The concept of ghosts is quite different. You see, souls are of different entity, not like us. But it is the soul that makes you become you. That makes you become moving about the nuisance. Some say, some of the uh, uh, philosophers said, like Socrates, Plato, Aristo, and those things, right? They said, when a soul is forcefully taken before the time schedule, it remains the vibration of the soul and the vibration emits certain energies in the shape of a man. And that is what we call a ghost. You, you know we vibrate. Every living thing vibrates. As you see there, you vibrate. Without vibration, there is no life. Do you understand? So when the soul, you know, the soul, the element of soul is light. And the speed of light is a uh, uh, one it's a thousand kilometers per second. I think you know that. Yes. So when the soul is forcefully taken out from the container or from where it is, the man or whatever, okay, the vibration, the remnant energy vibrates. The vibration designs give some sort of light that you call it a ghost. But witchcraft is something else. It's a culture. It's like occult. It's occultism. Occultism is quite different from Sufism. Quite different. They are opposites, on the contrary. Because occultism is a paranormal science. Cannot be measured in any laboratory. But Sufism is a practical science which can be measured 
in all laboratories. Salaam alaikum. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together once again for you. Um, there's supposed to be one question, but that one would have to come after um, our host comes to do a special uh, message. Nana Sufi will be giving us a special message. The question is on the ISIS and the Boko Harams and all that. But we'll come to that after he has done what he has to do. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we welcome Nana Sufi once again? And, uh, I kept telling them that uh, every student is a reflection of the master. So if you see me in my reflection, you should have an idea of who my master is. <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy today that Sheikh has taken time off his busy, uh, busy schedule to be here with us today. Please let me face you so that you can really get a feel of what I'm trying to say. The information that Sheikh has given us today cannot be quantified and it cannot... It, it's something you need to spend years under his feet to gain that knowledge. But he's come to our level to deliver this knowledge to us out of his own volition, out of his own free will. So how do we show our love for Sheikh? Because he's shown us enough love to come down here to us and deliver this message to us. So we need to show some love. And it's very necessary. Because that, that, that the revolution must be financed. Abi? Yeah, the revolution must be financed. You understand? Yeah. So at this juncture, please, I would like everybody to do something. Um, anything from the bottom of your heart that you want to give for this knowledge that you are getting as a blessing or as a token to show your appreciation that you are happy to have shake in our midst. Please, somebody is going to go around and uh, we are going to show our love for Sheikh because it takes, it takes a lot to come to this level and it takes a lot to give away but when you give away you must receive so that you are always full Ridwan yes Ridwan is ready please he's going to go around everybody whatever touches your heart the bigger you give, the bigger your blessing you receive. And it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. They say if you want to ask something from God, if you ask for a motorcycle, you don't get a motorcycle, you are going to get a bicycle. So if you want to ask something from God, you ask for a, a Range Rover. If you don't get a Range Rover and you get a RAV4, Charlie, you, you do with it. Or you get a Suzuki, something, you do with it. Uh -huh. But if you ask for how you call it? You ask for a, a, a bicycle, and you don't get a bicycle. You know, some truck or some wheelbarrow or something is what you are going to get. Uh -huh. So you have to move with faith, and move with faith. And everything you give, put your, your meditation behind it. Whatever you need to manifest in your life, inshallah, Allah, I know Allah will receive your ibadah. Allah will, will bless you. Allah will make you great. And Sheikh, once again, I'm very happy that you responded to our call uh, to be in our midst to bless us with your, 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 your knowledge and your presence and your light. And uh, I know today a lot of people have learned a lot from you. People have seen a difference. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم